Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. So I'm continuing um, my discussions on the Arctic sea ice, giving you an update on that. And in the previous video, I talked a little bit about the tragedy that occurred this week on Greenland. Greenland used to be, you know, very, very solid, um, you know, solid ice. But with the um, extremely warm temperatures up in the Arctic and the large melting um, of the ice and the large numbers of crevices, crevasses um, that are occurring on the, um, on the ice shelf, there was a, uh, there was a tragedy at the Swiss uh, camp people there, researchers were installing a weather station, um, you know, right at the camp. And Conrad Steffen um, walked, but, you know, was doing some other tasks, walked about 100 meters from the uh, main camp and uh, basically wasn't seen again. You know, people thought he'd gone back to his tent to have a nap, but um, he didn't show up and uh, the alarm went out, uh, you know, apparently in the, in, with the recent snow and the uh, high winds, you know, with blowing snow, um, there was a crevice that was um, covered up or, you know, I don't know if it had an um, ice bridge or something, but anyway, his, his weight, he ended up going into the crevice and uh, drowning at the bottom and I, d I don't, these things can be enormously deep. Um, his, his body was not uh, recovered. Um, I guess there were, you know, tracks leading to it or something. I don't know all the details, um, but I showed you a New York Times article which uh, gives a lot of the uh, information. So, you know, being a climate science in the field on glaciers, um, you know, is turning out to be you know, um, a risky, a risky in endeavor. Okay, so getting back to the Arctic sea ice, um, we've got about a month left in the, in the uh, melt season. And uh, so we're mid-August. You know, we've, we've, normally the minimum of sea ice is, is reached about mid-September. Okay, so I showed you, you know, Arctic sea ice graphs. This is what the ice is looking like uh, at the moment. Okay, I'll just go, go back there, this, this sort of thing. Okay, so very, very weak and fractured and broken. Um, and I talked about the, um, the daily mean temperatures from the Danish meteorological Institute and normally the, the uh, temperatures are pegged to the uh, melting temperature of the ice but you know here we have a blip and if you go back to the previous years you don't see this so I think this is a significant uh, occurrence and I think it's happening I think we're going to see this more and more often you know so in the circle um, north of 80 80 degrees latitude, the the temperature can start sp spiking up, and when there's no sea ice at all, this curve will continue up like this. Okay, so the warming will greatly accelerate in the Arctic because of the removal of the latent heat heat effect. Now, if you go to Earth Null School and you look at the air at temperature at the surface. Anything green is above zero, okay? So you can see kind of the blue area here, um, okay? So the sea ice is in this blue area here, and that's keeping the temperature pegged to uh, slightly below zero, but there's enough uh, warm air moving above the surface, and the warm ocean water around, um, you know, is basically the, the ice is being attacked from all um, angles. If we look at the jet streams, 250 millibar winds, okay, um, so 
So here we are, Greenland's here. Okay, so you can see very, very wavy, fractured, and broken up jet stream with many, many um, ridges and troughs and, you know, very complex, very elaborate pattern. So as the uh, Arctic is warming tremendously relative to the lower latitudes, the jet stream slows down and becomes much wavier and these patterns get stuck, stuck in place. Now, I want to look at some of the, um, if you go to the Arctic, so on the Arctic sea ice graphs, if you go and click on the Arctic sea ice forum, and you look at uh, what's going on, if you want all the details that track every little detail about the ice, this is the place to go. And, um, okay, so the 2020 melting season, um, there's plots here of the loss of ice in each of the different regions, okay, um, weather, lots of, all kinds of stuff. There's many, many people. I think there's something like 1,800 people that, um, that, are, that follow the site. You know, and people are wondering, you know, they're talking lately about the different sort of regime, if you like, of the ice. The degree of fragmentation of the ice in 2020 is enormous, okay? It's, um, you know, basically you can think of it as, you know, basically ice chunks or ice, you know, large ice cubes that are all um, floating around in the Arctic and they're somewhat confined by the rotation of the earth, by the Coriolis force, etc. Um, and you know, the big question is, is when will, you know, when, when will there be no ice left, right? And nobody can really answer that for sure. Okay, but the trend is down. A recent paper came out and gave, gives the ice 15 years. Um, you know, is it going to be five years? Is it going to be next year? I mean, it's really, really difficult to make a prediction. Okay, but there's all kinds of, if you look at the Arctic sea ice area, the Arctic sea ice area is tracking here. It's still dropping significantly, whereas the extent flattened out. So this, uh, you know, one of the things that the cyclone did is it caused a dispersal of the ice so that the extent drop slowed down, but the area drop um, is still significant. So if you take the ratio, if you like, uh, that gives you, that gives, that basically says, you know, talk, um, gives you information on, you know, the behavior of the ice, you know, and, and what it's doing. Okay, so there's all kinds of, you know, you have to go down to the bottom to get the latest. Okay, um, there's all kind. here's some worldview images. Lincoln Sea this year, August 11th versus 2004. So August 9th, 2004, you know, look at the ice here. Here, it's all separating away, okay? So people are specifically looking at um, individual regions. Um, here's another image of the ice with different colors representing different concentrations. So you can, you'll see lots of these sort of images. You can get all the details about, you know, the big open areas of water here. Uh, where the ice was pulled apart by the cyclone and the different concentrations represented by different colors, uh, motion of the ice, right? The whole thing is dynamic. The whole thing is moving. Um, another image here. Okay, images here comparing. Uh, this is for July and this is for August. This is... Uh, Okay, we're, again, worldview images. I think that's north of Greenland or Lincoln Sea uh, again. Okay. Um, okay, here is the another image of the DMI plot. So there's different years, like 60s, 80s, 2000s, 2010s, and then 2020. And you can see you know what's going on and I can't see this artifact anywhere else 
So I, I, I do think it's uh, significant. I think that we're, we're, you know, we're on the verge of huge changes. This is interesting. This is the Arctic sea ice compaction, which is defined as the sea ice area where you have 100% concentration of ice versus the extent. And everything that's got 15% or more ice is counted in extent. And what you can see is that the, uh, this curve is dropping off significantly. So these things are both falling, but the area is, is still falling. The extent has, has, has uh, flattened out a bit. Okay, so this is, if this is larger and this is smaller, then the ratio gives you uh, a record low here, which is what we can see. So. This is probably a, a new record here. Um, okay, uh, let's just go up and see what else we have here. Different images. Okay. Uh, this is the 8th to the 13th. So August 8th to the 13th, showing another view. So people are playing around with all of the different color palettes to try to uh, tease out the details. And again, this is, um, this is sea surface temperature. So look at the huge, huge temperatures. So the ice is, that's remaining is surrounded by water with enormous temperatures. And this water is cutting away at the ice on the, you know, edges, of course. I'll have a look at another um, um, forum. So this is, um, this is, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. So this one is homebrew AMSR. So a couple different sensors for the extent and area calculation. And you can see if you go to the bottom, you get most recent posts. So this is, this was just posted August 14th. Uh, this image showing the ice. The, so this is the ice concentration you know, highest concentrations in here, dropping off to the edges. So you can see all of the details and you can see the structure and how the ice is, is, is melting out. And there's some more images here, different color codes. Um, more up here. Yes, this one here is, I like this one here. It's quite, so, you know, there's huge differences this year. Um, you know, rather than the ice being a contiguous um, type of uh, entity, you know, it's full of, it's, it's, it's more like Swiss cheese. It's being interlaced here. This stuff is all going to, you know, we've got another month. So this stuff's all going to go out. You know, there's going to be some ice left here. You know, whether it's, you know, how much will it be? You know, a couple million square kilometers. It's probably, it, you know, may or may not uh, beat 2012. It looked like it was, if you asked me a month ago, it looked like it probably was. Now it looks like maybe it won't. Um, but the trend is, is uh, downward, of course, uh, you know, inexorably downward. Okay, and uh, I just wanted to give a quick update um, on the COVID numbers globally, over 21 million cases. 5.3 million in the U.S., followed by Brazil, 3.2 million, India, 2.4, and so on. You know, we're three quarters of a million uh, global deaths. And, uh, you know, the big concern is that kids are going back to school very soon. And, uh, you know, a lot of parents are extremely concerned, you know, what do they do? Um, you know, if you've got young kids and uh, they're going into school, you know, or the school's going to open and then close uh, a few weeks later, or a month later, you know, most uh, epidemiologists and virologists think that, you know, more waves are coming. You know, the key thing is, uh, you know, wear a mask inside and social distance. You know, always social distance inside and outside, but mask wearing should be mandatory inside and the the risk the biggest risk i think of catching it inside is if the air is not ventilated you know if it doesn't circulate well then your risks are higher anyway thank you for listening stay safe